Is the effect of dimple creation permanent? Would that blue thread, the non-dissolving thread, that the doctor uses to stitch the inner cheek stay in? Does this have any complications? Thank you for your question. You submitted a question without a photo, but you're asking about the permanence of undergoing dimpleplasty, and you're asking about a very specific issue related to the suture, what you describe as a blue suture that's placed permanently, and can that cause a problem later on? Well, certainly I can give you some guidance about this question. Uh, a little bit of background, I'm a board-certified cosmetic surgeon and fellowship-trained oculofacial plastic and reconstructive surgeon. I've been in practice in Manhattan and Long Island for over 20 years, and dimpleplasty is a procedure that I've become well-known for, um, and we've actually been recognized in the media, and patients come from around the world for dimples. Uh, and I, I'll certainly give you some guidance as to this question about permanence. Something to understand is, first of all, there's the, the short-term consistent result and then what happens as time goes on. So, first of all, the concept of doing, creating a dimple is to try to mimic what nature creates in a for a person with a natural dimple. And what that has to do is an anatomic aspect of the muscle inside the mouth called the buccinator muscle. And this muscle has this little opening and there's a connection so that when someone smiles, they get a dimple, they get a little indentation. And several well-known uh, celebrities have these dimples and people come and show pictures to me about what the types of dimples they like and the types they don't like and what kind they want. Now the technical aspect of creating a dimple for a surgeon is to essentially create a little opening in the mouth and connect the muscle that's inside the mouth with the skin and, and then having that connection hold. And that's critically important. And so what I tell my patients is when you have a dimpleplasty procedure, expect that the dimple will be there even when you're not smiling and to different degrees of depth for the first several months. That's very important to understand because we want that connection to be tight. I, I, I tell my patients that if you're not prepared for that and you want something that's super subtle, you're going to end up not having something that's going to last for the long term. And so I end up always doing something where I'm, be, I'm being aggressive to connect the skin with the muscle. Now to answer the question about the blue suture, what you're describing is basically a non-dissolvable suture, specifically, most likely, a uh, suture called proline. Well, in the deeper tissues of the body, where there's no connection between the outside and the inside, permanent sutures are routinely placed. And so, specifically in that space, that suture is not likely to cause any issue. The reason to use a permanent suture for a surgeon is to have the strength of that suture and maintaining that connection for the critical amount of time in order for the body to prevent healing tissue that allows that permanence to occur. When you use a dissolving suture, sometimes because the body breaks down that suture and when that breakdown involves some degree of inflammation, that can be somewhat challenging um, in, in getting the desired outcome, if, especially if the body forms a capsule or some type of inflammatory response, whether it's the different types of sutures that are generally dissolvable. So I, I, I think that you don't have to worry that that suture would be a problem in the long term. It's just a matter of getting past the initial period where the possibility of infection is a risk because you're working from the inside of the mouth. And the inside of the mouth is lots, has lots of bacteria. So in our practice, we, tell, we have our patients placed on antibiotics and we have them use antibacterial mouthwashes and we give them specific restrictions about different types of food and temperature of food to allow the opening of the mouth to, be, to heal adequately so that the risk of infection is minimized. So with that being said, 
meet with a doctor who is highly experienced with dimple procedures. I always say that, interestingly, well known, uh, well, uh, as a side note, that this procedure is deceptively complicated. It's a, working in a very small area to create a very specific result and a lot of doctors simply just don't do enough to become good at this procedure. So I've actually had very well-known surgeons refer their patients to me for dimples uh, because we just do a good number of them. And it just is something that is a niche procedure and it has nothing to do with being a better surgeon or not. It's just the amount of experience and consistency of doing a, a particular operation. So that being said, again, meet with a doctor who's experienced with doing dimples and learn from their experience what they feel the longevity of the procedure would be. It's very important to understand that, you know, you talk about permanence with any operation in the face, you're also dealing with natu nature's process, facial aging, environmental factors, weight gain, weight loss, stressors. So in the context of all that, you have to understand what, what's the likelihood of the dimple being something that will last for you and whether or not an enhancement or revision procedure or repeat procedure will be necessary. You know, I, I think that you know, when people look for permanence, I always remind everyone that we are not permanent. We are continuously changing and aging processes affect everyone differently considering the factors of genetics and environment. So I hope that was helpful. I wish you the best of luck. Thank you for your question.